Welcome. So we're at the business end. It's all uh, very exciting. Champions Cup semi-final weekend is coming. We know our URC quarter-final lineup. That will be Friday, 5th of May. Ulster against Connacht. We'll have Leinster hosting the Sharks on Saturday, the 6th. And Glasgow will play Munster also on the Saturday because of the weekend from 22-3 down. Munster drew with the Sharks, 22 points apiece. Bulls 62 Leinster 7 is the most bizarre scoreline of the season and then Glasgow beat Connacht 29 points to 27 and John Cooney to the 4 for Ulster who beat Edinburgh on the Friday night very happy to say Jerry Thornley of the Irish Times here in the studio hello hello how are you doing Joe and Fiona Hayes good evening you're very welcome thanks Joe good to see you Jerry uh, see you too there was also of course Ireland nil, England 48 at Musgrave Park and so Edinburgh on Saturday night beckons it is the evening game to uh, round off the women's six nations where Ireland will need a bonus point win realistically to avoid the wooden spoon and considering they've scored two tries across the championship to score four away to Scotland seems a tall order so we'll talk about that in due course uh, the URC regular season has finished up, Jerry. Where are we putting that URC regular season in comparison with what we've seen over the guts of the last uh, decade, I suppose? I suppose it's been <clears throat> an upgrade with the South Africans there. I'm just not 100% convinced that they belong in the URC, but they're there. And with all the travel difficulties, both for them coming up here and others going down there, um, that, that this entails. But I do think that they've been, um, <clears throat> they've upped standards. Um, I think there will be a, an extra frisson of excitement around the Aviva when the Sharks come in light of what the Bulls did in the semi-finals of the ODS last year. Um, we're guaranteed one South African team in the semis with the all South African clash to repeat of last year's final between the Stormers and Bulls. So I think that's been good, particularly if you imagine a URC without the South Africans this year, given how the Welsh sides have gone backwards and are seemingly going to go further backwards. Um <clears throat> Apart from Glasgow and the Irish provinces, it wouldn't be a very competitive URC, would it? So I think, on balance, while it's not far from perfect and this concept is far from perfect and the way the fixtures pan out is far from perfect, it's not even a regular league as such where we replace the same number of home and away games. All in all, it's been interesting and, you know, been quite good rugby and it's probably just as well the South Africans were there or otherwise it wouldn't have been. Mm. Agree with that, Fiona, an upgrade? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know last year in particular, last season's URC, it was kind of disrupted at the start, I suppose, with COVID and the South Africans. We really didn't see them come into the fore till the second half of that URC season. So I think this, this year again, they've upped to the level and, you know, they've been really good competition, especially for the Irish provinces. Like Jerry said, Wales aren't up to scratch and, you know, it would have been all too easy for, for the likes of Leinster and you would imagine they would have run away with it even further with, with the Irish squad in there but I I suppose a big thing as well is this kind of rule for this year where Connacht will be very disappointed with the Champions Cup playoff um, you know the likes of the Welsh team getting in and the Italian team and I know that it's going to change next year but but for, for Connacht in particular I'm sure they're disappointed with that end of the season and how it ended So what is the situation with Connacht? I think Fiona as things stand Connacht are in unless the Challenge it's Cup produces cup. a winner from the Scarlets or Benetton. The Italians and the Scots are in the same group, so Glasgow won that shield, so that okay. means Benetton don't make it as things stand. Benetton would have to win the Challenge Cup to get the, if you like, yeah. the seventh place. Um, so Connor will be rooting for Toulon this weekend and most likely again in the final if they get through. Okay. And ideally they'd be rooting for Glasgow to win away to the Scarlets next weekend as well. And then the outcome of the champ ch Challenge Cup final will not matter. They'll be through. There's one other scenario in which Connacht could miss out, and that's if the Sharks won the URC. Because mm. after I found out today that, just to confirm it through the URC, that the winners of the URC, if not already guaranteed a place in the Champions Cup the following season, also progress. Okay. So their 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 fate is hinging upon Leinster knocking out the Sharks in two weeks' time, and before then, Toulon and Glasgow making sure they reach the final, and then they're in the Champions Cup, and which by rights they deserve. Is that Leinster Sharks <coughs> game at the Aviva? Yes, it is. Mm. I think Bruce is playing at the RDS soon enough, isn't he? And that's why all Leinster's remaining oh, games game. this season are at the Aviva. Okay. Which could lead to a little bit of Aviva knockout fatigue, the way things are going, but we'll yeah. see. It's okay. going to be a hard enough, hard enough sell. But also, I think it has to be said that 
we kind of take it for granted, Joe, a little bit that four Irish teams have finished in the top seven and have mm. qualified for the Champions Cup as things stand. It's a remarkable achievement, really, and a, particularly with the South Africans in there. And you look at Munster going to South Africa in the last two weeks after the result they had against the Sharks in the Champions Cup round of 16 and to go there and get a win against the Stormers and then to get a draw against the Sharks from 22-3 down really was in many ways the performance of the last fortnight and they actually ultimately did both Ulster and Connacht a favour because it opened the door for Ulster to finish second which they quietly sneaked into which could ultimately be the difference between a home semi-final or an away semi-final in either Belfast or Cape Town or wherever or South Africa anyway for Ulster and it also helped ensure that Connacht finished above the Sharks and could therefore qualify for the Champions Cup as well. I think come kickoff, off Connacht were assured of that, but only because Munster did hold the Sharks. When Sharks were leading 22-3, and you would have thought they were going to go on and get a fourth try and get a bonus point win. That would have sneaked them above Connacht, most likely on points difference. As it transpired, Connacht got their bonus point away to Glasgow, which was a good achievement, considering they didn't have Mack Hansen or Bundyaki, and showed what a good side they are. So I think, you know, for Leinster to top the regular standings and get a home route all the way potentially to the final, for Ulster to get second place and a home quarter and potentially home semi-final, and for Munster and Connacht both to make the playoffs and, fingers crossed for Connacht, both to make the Champions Cup overall is a hell of an achievement that we shouldn't take for granted because it won't happen every year. Very true. Fiona, as Ben Healy was trotting <coughs> onto the pitch on 53 minutes with Munster 22-3 down against the Sharks it was looking ominous so 22 points apiece and Munster held up as well at the death they could very easily have won this game Archer once again plays 80 minutes in the front row O'Mahony like he's just made for these games it's like the the, the dirtier and the grittier sign me up Uh, Connor Murray I think has probably uh, copper fast in Jerry's argument that he should have played against the Sharks originally in the Champions Cup uh, Keith Earls joins the 200 club and he also made an impact. This has been, from what looked at the moment of their uh, departure from the Champions Cup, like what w- w- would turn out to be a, a morale-sapping, nail-in-the-coffin of, of this season-type trip to South Africa. It's completely rejuvenated things. Absolutely. Um, just on that Ben Healy point, I said it last week, he's like a, a different guy since he's come back from Scottish camp. He just looks like he's taken control of everything. He came onto the pitch, he varied up the game, he's kicking the game in those few minutes was outstanding. I know the kick led to the crossfield try, but even watching him in the backfield, he just looks like he's enjoying life. And, and they've definitely, I would imagine, the squad has bonded on the back of those two huge performances. And um, Peter Amani, as you said, getting stuck in I, I, I thought it was hilarious the whole bench just sat there with their arms crossed didn't even shake a head or smile or move because it's just they knew when Peter Homani was getting into that just before the yellow card like that that's just the way it is everyone was fired up and they went with a job to do, to do and now they have a chance of getting back at Glasgow because remember Glasgow came to Tom and Bark and that was quite embarrassing for Munster Rugby that performance so it's it's huge for them to, to even get the opportunity to play Glasgow albeit away but it, it's it's really rejuvenated his squad and I think we will see a big performance over there mm. Did you see it coming Jerry? No I didn't um, Now I was out in Castle Avenue at the Clontarf Young Munster AIL semi-final and I'm two and a half thousand others despite the um, incessant rain and I was watching it in a bar before I went back and watched it properly today but even at 22-3 down the South African commentators are saying Munster will now be working out how much fuel they've got left in the tank by their own admission they were writing Munster's obituaries And for them to come back from there in the humidity and get a draw just shows you what a result... They're an amazing group whenever their backs are against the wall. The many times they defy all the gloomy predictions of their demise. They just... They just... They roll their sleeves up, get down and dirty and just go and just fight to the bitter end. And does it make they, their Champions Cup exit a touch more yep, frustrating? It does a bit because I think they'll... They obviously learned a good few lessons from that, protecting their breakdown ball. Mm. They were much better at that. Um, Conor Murray, interestingly started both games in South Africa since being left on the bench for that Champions Cup match and was still on the pitch after 70 plus minutes both times which suggests they learned a lesson there you just need that physicality and experience as I've argued here before yeah. um, and then they were totally vindicated and having Ben Healy on the bench ahead of Joey Carber even though Ben Healy is um, Scotland bound because you know against the Stormers he threw that brilliant pass that led to the Shane Daly try which was effectively the winning the game and I think with his very first action after coming off the bench on Saturday he Um, had that kick pass, cross kick pass, like just to perfection for Calvin Nash for that finish that Nash produced. And that's what really got them back in the game before Murray's equalising try. And 
they were they still they, a nice amalgam now like they were still trying to play a lot of offloading rugby and mm. really going for it but there was just a grittier it was a bit much more of the gritty resolve that Munster have shown in the past and you know it it, it, it it's very important, I think, for them that they didn't get relegated to the Champ- Challenge Cup for the first time in 29 years. I think it would have been just disastrous for the brand at a time when Limerick hurling is booming, when young fans are supporting the hurling team more. For Munster to have slipped into the Challenge Cup would have been particularly damaging for them given they are two-time winners of the Champions Cup, the Heineken Champions Cup, and that's very much the competition which has defined them in the pro- professional era. So also when you think of what Roundtree and Prendergast and Leamy and the coaching staff have tried to do there, there were bound to be teething problems. They had such a slow start. To ultimately have their backs to the wall in South Africa and get a win and a draw to squeak into the, to absolutely nail down Champions Cup qualification fifth place. Not many people would have seen that coming no. into the last two weeks of the season. And it just gives a little bit of an imprimatur to the whole Roundtree and Prendergast regime. You can see their game has evolved significantly. Um, after those mm. difficult problems at the start of the season, and it's it's I think it it almost a free, they won't view it as a shot to nothing, but it's almost a free hit now against Glasgow. They've secured their place in the playoffs, and more importantly, in many respects, I think for the brand and for the finances, they secure Champions Cup rugby next season as well. Um, and you know, Glasgow have a semi final in the Challenge Cup next weekend, whereas Munster can rest up after their exertions in South Africa. And I know Glasgow have been unbeaten in seventeen home games and. Munster have fallen there before in the knockout stages, but it's and it's a very tricky venue for sure. But they'll go there with a renewed sense of optimism now. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and with that as well, Jerry, like it's it's very unusual for a team to go over, and they did struggle in at scrum time to be able to go over yeah. to South Africa and come mm. away points albeit struggling at scrum time as well like Archer was immense around the pitch and uh, Lockman in particular got pinned a couple of times by the referee I thought Witcherly when he came on he really steadied the ship but like to come away with those points and not let um, the Sharks score with your scrum like under massive pressure I thought was really really good of this squad and it shows their grit and determination Yes because you remember Fiona after their exit at the hands of the Sharks in Europe we bemoaned the front row it's been yeah. a weakness for Munster for too long so they're still it's not quite one hand tied behind their back, but it's definitely a weakness that they have to carry. Yeah, definitely. Look, and uh, as I said, I thought Witcherly now, albeit Nietzsche was off, and there was changes in the in the in the Sharks front row. But I thought they really he steadied up. I just thought Lockman. They started really well. They got their their height set nice and early. But it is an area, especially against the bigger packs, they're just so dominant. And I think once they get a couple of penalties, the referee is also going on the side of the of those uh, sharks at the time and other bigger teams. So. I think it's that, you know, as Archer in particular, I thought was good and anchored the scrum. And as I said, it was kind of on the loose side, but that's, they have lacked that cohesion at times in the front row throughout the season. Mm. And they were definitely getting pinned there. So it is an area that they'll definitely be looking at. And we know John Ryan, hopefully he'll be coming back, um, you know, and he's in good form, but they, they'll need to start getting these guys into more game time. And Salanoa keeps getting injured as well. So it's, it's an area Munster need to tighten up going into next season in particular. You need okay. to give a shout out to Malachi Fekatoa as well. He's uh, yeah. since it was uh, announced that he w- they would be parting ways. He's actually produced his best rugby for Munster, and I don't know they would have got a draw without him last Saturday. His running game was so strong. It's mm. funny, isn't it? And, and Healy as well. It can go one of two ways yeah. when you're nearing the end. You can play with a certain level of enjoyment, and I'm going to enjoy my final moments, or you can be cast aside and you're mm-hmm. uh, forgotten. They've been very much uh, to the fore. So again, Ulster Connacht that'll be a brilliant quarter final Friday. Yeah. Leinster host the Sharks at the Aviva on the Saturday and then Glasgow Munster. There you go. That was uh, but a taste of the full rugby conversation. As usual, you can get the full chat wherever you get your podcast. It's waiting for you right now.